Hi friends, today we're going to read United States Monuments and Parks. Let's get started. Here is a map of the United States. Over here we have the Northeast, and here we have the South where it's green. The red is the Northeast, and those are the states of Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Maine. And that's here. Here we have the South. The green states are the South. That's West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, where you live, Florida, Alabama, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas. I don't know if you guys can see. Oklahoma and Texas. The orange states are the Midwest, and that's North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio. And the purple states are in the western part of the state of the United States. Washington, Montana, Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona. And those are the different parts that make up our United States. You ready to read? Let's learn all about our national monuments and parks. First up, we have the Grand Canyon National Park. The Grand Canyon is one of the most breathtaking scenic wonders in the world. It looks as if a giant ripped open the earth to expose the colorful strata of oranges and reds. In reality, the 20 layers of rock formations are the result of erosion. About 40 million years ago, the Colorado River began flowing through what was then a plateau. Over millions of years, it eroded the rock, leaving a pathway of huge openings. At the same time, forces under the Earth's surface began to push the surrounding land higher. Because the canyon is so deep, the weather at the top of the canyon might be cold, windy, and snowy, while at the same time, the bottom might have blossoming flowers and warm breezes. And there's a picture of it. And this is a bighorn ram. And he's at this, at, um, he's standing on the canyon's edge. And the Grand Canyon is found in Arizona, in the west. Next, we're going to talk, talk about the Grand Teton National Park. Grand Teton National Park protects some of the most beautiful mountain scenery in the United States. The tallest peak of the range is Grand Teton, which has an elevation of 13,770 feet. The Grand, the Middle, and South Tetons are the heart of the range. These regal mountains rise through the dense forest of confers and into alpine meadows, which are covered with wildflowers in the spring. A string of clear glacier lakes fed by the streams from the mountains tightly surround the base of the range. Beyond these, the landscape stretches into a sagebrush valley of Jackson Hole with its rocky forested butts and aspen trees. The Snake River begins in the southern part of Yellowstone National Park and winds its way past the Tetons on its way to Idaho. And Grand Teton National Park is located in Wyoming which is where um, Yellowstone National Park begins, I believe. Let me show you a picture. And there's a picture. Do you guys see the mountains in the back, the snow? Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. And this is located, these are located in California. These two national parks are right next to each other in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. Some of the tallest trees in the world, the sequoias, are located there. The largest tree of them all is called the General Sherman. Its diameter is larger than a basketball court. There are other trees in the United States that are taller or wider, 
but no other tree has the total weight and width of this amazing 2,000 year old monster sized tree. Some of its branches are almost seven feet in diameter, which is larger than the diameter of the trunks of most trees. You guys see that massive sequoia? And next we'll talk about Yellowstone National Park, which is located most of it in Wyoming, parts of Montana and Idaho. Powerful forces beneath the earth shape the beauty of the, of the pristine wilderness of the Yellowstone National Park. During the tertiary period, about 55 million years ago, magma from deep inside the earth created the Washburn and Absaroka Mountains. About 640,000 years ago, a massive supervolcano erupted and formed a volcanic crater called the Yellowstone Caldera which is 28 by 47 miles in size. The park is filled with evidence of the volcanic activity that is deep under its surface. There are more than 10,000 geysers throughout the park, including its most famous geyser called Old Faithful. It erupts within a range of every 60 to 110 minutes and spews 200 degree Fahrenheit water into the air at an average height of 130 feet. One great way to tour the park is by driving the 142 mile long road called the Grand Loop. It travels a figure eight path around the park's most spectacular features. And this pool is called Morning Glory Pool. And there's one of the geysers erupting and a bison. Ball Lands National Park is located in South Dakota. The amazing landscape in this park includes a geological feature called the wall. It stands about a hundred miles dividing the desert plains. Water and wind have carved a fantastic sculpture out of the rocks. There are colorful spears and towering pinnacles. There are enormous butts and dramatic gorges. The layer of sedimentary rock here have different colors. The white is volcanic ash and the orange is iron oxidized. There is shale and shades of purple as well as yellow. The park has one of the most amazing beds of fossilized mammals in the world. You're not allowed to take a fossil, but you can enjoy watching the bison as well as the bighorn sheep and pronghorn that roam within the park. And here is a black-footed ferret. Next, we're going to talk about a monument. Um, and this is Mount Rushmore. It's actually a national memorial. Mount Rushmore is a shrine to the United States democracy. This towering um, Botholith in the Black Hills region of South Dakota has been carved with the heads of uh, four famous influential presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. The faces are 60 feet tall. Behind the giant faces, there is a cave called the Hall of Records. It has a vault with 16 panels of text including the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. It also includes biographies of the four presidents as well as a biography of Gutson Borglum, the famous Dutch American sculptor who designed, whose design was selected for the memorial. And Mount Rushmore is in South Dakota. And in the Midwest, located in Missouri, we have the St. Louis Gateway Arch. The Gateway Arch in St. Louis, Missouri was built as a tribute to the pioneers who drove America's western expansion. It is located within the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial, 
a riverfront park found near the starting point of Lewis and Clark's flame, famous exploration mission. Designed by architect Euro Ser, Ser, Serenine, sorry guys, the arch was built between 1963 and October 1965 when it was finally completed. The Gateway Arch holds many records. It is the tallest man-made monument in the Western Hemisphere. It is also the world's tallest arch and tallest stainless steel monument. Visitors can travel to the top of the arch and a special tram system that runs inside the legs. About 1 million people per year make this exciting trip. It's a lot of people. And next we'll talk about Theodore Roosevelt National Park and it's located in North Dakota. Before he was president, Theodore Roosevelt was an adventurer. He came to North Dakota in 1883 to hunt bison, and he loved the natural beauty so much that he invested in ranch land. He developed a deep, deep interest in conserving the beauty of the United States for future generations. During his presidency, he set aside millions of acres of land for conservation. The park named after him is divided into three sections of badlands the North Unit, the South Unit, and the Elkhorn Ranch Unit. One of the major features of the South Unit is the Scenic Loop Drive, a 36-mile highway that has pullouts where visitors can see some of the park's natural and historic features. And next we'll talk about Big Bend National Park which is located in the South in Texas. Big Bend National Park is located in the Chihuahuan Desert of West Texas. The park is over 80, 800,000 acres in size, bigger than the state of Rhode Island. It is an amazing mix of beautiful desert scenery with rugged mountains cut by river canyons. The Santa Elena Canyon is one of three major canyons in the park. And this canyon is created by the famous Rio Grande River. The, wind, the winds it, that winds its way through the park and forms the national border between Texas and Mexico. The canyon's limestone walls are 1,500 feet high. The Sierra Ponce wall is a part of Mexico and the Mesa de Anguilla wall is a part of Texas. And this is the Balanced Rock Formation down here. Isn't that cool? Next, we'll talk about the Everglades National Park. The largest tropical wilderness in the United States, the Everglades is a mangrove and rainforest ecosystem. Although it's frequently described as a marsh, a marsh or a swamp, the Everglades is actually a river that's filled with different types of grasses and moves extremely slow. The water begins from Lake Okeechobee and trickles from north to south. This river of grass is 60 miles wide at points and 100 miles long. One of the common grassy plants is called sawgrass for a reason. It has blades that are so sharp they sometimes cut through clothing. And the Everglades has nine distinct habitats and is home to many endangered animals that live on the land, such as the Florida panther, and in the water, such as the Atlantic Ridley sea turtle and the West Indian manatee. The park is also home to 350 documented species of water birds. And of course, as I said, the Everglades is located in Florida. Here's the sea turtle, and that's the West Indian manatee. Next, we have the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Look at that beautiful picture. The largest park situated east of the Rocky Mountains, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And this park is located in Tennessee and North Carolina. It gets its name from the smoky mist that hovers above the mountains almost continuously. Straddled between Tennessee and North Carolina, the park has beautiful views of the mountains, over 730 miles of crystal clear mountain streams, abundant wildflowers, and a dense lush forest. 
and Cades Cove is the most visited area of the park. It's a 4,000 acre valley with pioneer homesteads, lots of hiking trails, and a large campground. And this is called Clingman's Dome Overlook. And this is another popular place where people go and visit. Harper's Ferry National Historical Park. Harper's Ferry is located in West Virginia, Virginia, and Maryland. The town of Harper's Ferry, West Virginia is famous for being a hotbed of activity during the American Civil War. Long before the war, the town had become an important manufacturing and transportation hub. When war struck, these qualities made Harper's Ferry a very desirable target for military forces on both sides of the conflict. The town was the site of many battles and it changed hands 14 times during the war. The town of Hopper's Ferry is just one part of the Hopper's Ferry National Historic Park, which includes the town and its surroundings. Along with its many historical sites of interest, the park also offers some of the America's most breathtaking scenery. And this looks like almost like a little downtown and a beautiful mountain behind it. All right, the Appalachian National Scenic Trail. You guys see that? And this is located, this scenic trail is located in Connecticut, Georgia, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and West Virginia. Wow. The Appalachian National Scenic Trail is 2,181 miles long and winds its way through 14 states. It's not the longest North American hiking trail, but it's still the most famous. Day hikers travel all, from all around the eastern United States to travel short sections of it. Every spring, through hikers set out from the Georgia Southern Terminus to walk the trail's entire length. A, hike, a through hike is a hike that's been completed from end to end in one hiking season. Less than 15,000 people have walked a successful through hike of the trail. That's a lot of hiking. Okay, now we have Cape Cod National Seahorse. And Cape Cod National Seahorse is located in Massachusetts. Cape Cod National Seahorse has 40 miles of beaches for nature lovers and hikers. Can you guys see that? Some parts of the seashore are near small seaside communities but there are lot, long expanses of beautiful, unspoiled, accessible coastline. The seashore sandy beach, beaches, marshes, freshwater, kettle ponds, and uplands offer the proper habitat for many different animal species. Here you might see a herd of harbor or gray seals sunning themselves on the beach or red fox playing on the sand dune. The views of the Atlantic Ocean from the tops of the cliffs are breathtaking. All right, we also have the Gettysburg National Military Park, and this is located in Pennsylvania. Gettysburg National Military Park is the location of the turning point of the Civil War, which happened on July 1st through the 3rd in 1863. It was the second time Confederate General Robert E. Lee had invaded the North, but the Union proved victorious. The victory came at a great cost. The park has over 1,400 monuments and memorial statues are placed across the huge battlefield. Most of the monuments stand where the military units actually fought. And here's some cannons. The Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island National Monument. 
a symbol of freedom known worldwide, the Statue of Liberty was gifted to the United States by France in the 1880s to commemorate the friendship between the two countries. Nearby Ellis Island was the first place where millions of immigrants to the United States came on shore in the late 19th and 20th centuries. Close to 40% of all Americans can trace at least one relative who came to the United States through Ellis Island. And here's the Statue of Liberty and there's Ellis Island. And here's the main building which houses Ellis Island. And this is in New York. Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve is located in Alaska. All right. When Captain George Vancouver was sailing off the coast of Alaska in 1794, Glacier Bay was hidden under a thick layer of ice. The ice was a few miles wide with a thickness of thousands of feet. Since that time period, the glaciers have retreated about 65 miles, which has revealed the land and bay. The land is a living, a living laboratory to tell the story of how many glaciers retreat the plants that start growing once they've retreated and the animals that make the new vegetation their home. The new plants and trees have created a habitat for moose, wolves, and mountain goats. Black and brown bears have taken up residence too. And there's a closer picture of a glacier and a glacier calving. Kanai Fords National Park, or fjords. Named for its fjords, which are deep inlets of the sea between high cliffs, this park is the smallest in Alaska, but offers some of the most dramatic scenery. The central feature of the park is the hardened ice field. There, the ice is up to a mile in thickness and covers an area of 700 square miles. The ice field feeds almost three dozen glaciers that flow out of the mountains, six of which are tidewater glaciers. During during the something era, most of the state was covered with an enormous sheet of ice. <laughs> it's an ancient era. Here's a horn puffin, and here's a humpback whale breaching. Hawaii. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. The park is on Hawaii's big island and offers a dramatic view of two of the most active volcanoes in the world, the Kilauea and the Mauna Leo, or the Mauna Loa, <laughs> which means Long Mountain, is the older and much larger of the two. Measured from its base, which is 18,000 feet below sea level, it's taller than Mount Everest in height. It's the Earth's most massive single mountain. Kilauea, which means spreading, or much spewing, is located on Mauna, Leo's, Mauna, Le Mauna Loa's southeastern slope. Vis visitors can travel on trails close to the cinder cones, huge pits, and hot lava. And there's a closer picture of it. All right, we have another one. Um, another national park that's located in Hawaii. And that is the... Let's see if Ms. Tiffany can say this. The Haleakala, the Haleakala National Park. The Haleakala National Park is divided into two different sections, the Summit Area and the Kipahulu Area, which is the coastline and contains a protected rainforest. It also features the Halakalea Crater. I think is here. Um, there's also many different species of cedar from the Himalayan region, suji from Japan, eucalyptus from Australia, as well as pine, spruce, fir, and cypress. And here is the Haleakala Observatory. 
you guys ever get to travel there. And Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is a treasure trove of historical monuments. These are two of the most famous. The Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Monument. The majestic memorial has the architecture of a Greek Doric temple. Inside, there is a large seated marble sculpture of Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States. And there are also inscriptions with the text from two of Lincoln's well-known speeches, the Gettysburg Address and his second inaugural address. The Washington Monument, one of the Washington DC's most iconic structures. This monument is both the world's tallest as um, obelisk, as well as the world's tallest structure made of stone. Built to honor George Washington, the first president of the United States. The obelisk is over 554 feet tall, constructed of marble, granite, and bluestone nice. The monument is located due east of the Lincoln Memorial. 50 flags represent 50 states surround the monument. Can you guys see that? And that concludes the end of our book all about United States monuments and parks. I hope some of you guys get to travel to some of these places or many of you have already probably traveled to some of these beautiful parks and monuments. All right. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.